There's a study that followed 16 professional cyclists during La Volta, España in 2019. It analyzed how their gut microbiota was directly linked to their cycling performance. It also took a look at how simple carbohydrates, such as gels, eaten during the race, negatively impacted the gut in their performance. Let's dive into it. But first, what is bacteria? They are microscopic, single-celled living organisms that lack a nuclear membrane. They can be found in soil, water, acidic hot springs, and even the human body. We carry a vast number of bacteria, especially in our GI system, which can be beneficial for our health. While some bacteria can be harmful and cause diseases, others are beneficial and play key roles in various biological processes. So the classification of bacteria as good, bad, or indifferent depends on their specific characteristics, functions, and interactions with living organisms. But we're not going to get into the weeds on that today. Let's focus on what bacteria can do for our athletic performance. Bacteria plays a crucial role in our performance through their influence on our GI system. The gut microbiota consists of a diverse community of bacteria in the GI tract and has been shown to impact sports performance. And there is a new study that specifically looked at bacteria's impact on professional cyclists. The aim of the study was to analyze the microbiota composition and short chain fatty acid content of 16 professional cyclists over three weeks at La Volta, España in 2019. They wanted to understand bacteria's relationship with performance indicators, dietary intake, and supplement use. Now, we don't know exactly who the cyclists were, but the study does give us some clues. They took 16 professional cyclists from two cycling teams, among those competing in La Volta, España in 2019. The study tells us that both teams were ranked in the top 10 of the 2019 UCI ranking, and that both finished in the top 5 in the team classification at La Volta, España in 2019, and that one of the riders crashed out on stage 14 and had to abandon the race. So. I took a look at the standings from that year and did my own process of elimination. We see that Mitchelton Scott finished in the top five and had one rider, Luca Mesget, get a DNS on stage 15. So that's team number one. And Yobo Visma had two riders abandon the race, but the study tells us that 15 riders finished the study's completion. So that means that the two teams involved in the study were Mitchelton Scott and either Movistar or Astana because the final 2019 UCI rankings include all three. Samples were collected from the riders at four different time points. On the morning of the day before the first stage, on the morning before the first rest day after nine stages, on the morning of the second rest day after 15 stages, and on the morning of the last day of the race after 20 stages. They then used these parameters as indicators of performance. Number one, power output expressed as the average power to weight ratio per stage, and number two, position in the overall individual ranking and accumulated time at each sampling point which the authors of the study admit was a limitation due to the rider's role on the team. They also included two subjective parameters. The first, the rating of perceived exertion, or RPE, at the end of La Volta as an indicator of the rider's fatigue. And number two, the total quality recovery, or TQR scale, both at the beginning and at the end of the competition as an indication of recovery. Only one of the team's medical staff provided information on food intake and supplement use. The study looked at dietary intake in the month leading up to that race using a questionnaire that included specific sports foods, such as carbohydrate drinks, protein bars, and carbohydrate and caffeinated gels. The same questionnaire was used to track food intake during the competition. So that means Esteban Chavez and others recorded their food intake two days before the B sampling point and then were instructed to maintain the same diet pattern before C and D sampling points to minimize variability. The medical staff also documented each cyclist's probiotic supplement use and composition throughout the competition along with any antibiotic treatment. So after doing all this, what the hell happened? Well, a few things. They found that the abundance of four specific bacteria were strongly linked to the cyclist's final race performance and overall time. The amount of a specific bacteria at the start of the race was tied to the cyclist eating a lot of complex carbohydrates before the event. But during the race, another bacteria decreased when the cyclist consumed more simple carbs from supplements. At the completion of the race, half of the top 10 GC riders came from one of the teams that were included in this study. So the key takeaway here for our own athletic performance is that the overall balance and diversity of gut bacteria is essential rather than just looking at individual bacteria. The composition of our diets as cyclists, including our carb intake before and during an event, can significantly influence our gut microbiome. So as recreational riders, if we want to get the most out of our performance on the bike, paying specific attention to our gut health through our nutrition is critical. 
especially as you build up to your A events. So with all this in mind, make sure you're getting plenty of complex carbs, fiber, and fermented foods while limiting simple sugars. Here's five foods that you can start to implement into your diet today. Oats, a nutritionally complete food containing carbohydrates, healthy fats, and protein and sustained energy release. Brown rice, a complex carbohydrate that provides lasting energy and is versatile for various meal options. Quinoa, a complete protein source with high fiber content, aiding digestion and providing sustained energy. Whole grain pasta, which is rich in carbohydrates for energy and fiber for digestion, a great pre-ride meal option. And lastly, whole grain bread, a convenient source of complex carbs for energy, especially when you pair it with protein-rich toppings like nut butter or eggs. These changes could be a game changer for our cycling performance and recovery. If you want to dive deeper in this study, I'll put a link in the description and I hope this information was helpful. Happy training.